Hello everyone, welcome back to another video and today we'll be taking a look at the locomotive in which I bought halfway through this year, this is 2021 of course, and it is the Martin Evans 040 Tender Loco, the Conway. Uh, in this video I'll be explaining a bit of the history and showing off some of the pictures and videos in which I took and some of the features this locomotive has as well as making a commentary uh, before the videos show up as well so I hope you enjoy the video and uh, I'll speak to you in a second so where to begin well the pictures I'm about to show you or are showing you rather are the pictures that were off the advertisement for the loco on eBay um, showing all the key parts of the loco like the hand pump which is on the screen now um, well, the first problem I saw was that the the lock for the reversal was broken off as well but it was really really well engineered the whole loco has been well engineered as you can see these are the cylinders the valves of the loco um, they're all still pretty good running in order and all that uh, the next picture I'm showing you is the cab of the loco you'll see obviously this in action when it wants to get around to so putting the videos in the in this video and again here's the back half of the underside in the center there you can see the, uh, the water pump and all the eccentrics and valves the Stevenson's linkage even including the ash pan here's a smoke box we'll get around to uh, telling you a bit about the superheater later on it also comes with a set of firing irons and uh, you can see the ash pan fire grate including a homemade spark arrestor for the loco as well now the next two photos were the photos that really charmed me for this loco because as you can see it's called Cluid and it is also number four and it's very red very red indeed once payment had gone through uh, me and my dad then woke up really early on the Saturday of the same week um, got into the car and drove all the way up to Lincolnshire to go collect it now I've never driven that far um, well as you've probably seen from the, uh, the Keithley video before then that was the furthest I've actually driven in my car um, so anyway sidetracked we drove up to Lincolnshire picked up the loco had a chat with the lovely gentleman um, he runs his own model selling business and uh, picked it up came back and noticed I still had some daylight left because we, we, me and my dad left about half five in the morning to drive up to Lincolnshire and back um, as soon as we came back with, with the loco in the in the car I then drove over to Haywards Heath which is my local uh, model engineering club uh, and railway some of you may know it as uh, Beechhurst Miniature Railway it's, it's a lovely place to pop down, lovely group of gentlemen and uh, showed them the locomotive which, in which I just bought including uh, Mark who told me about the loco for sale on eBay he actually went up there and saw the loco as well uh, whilst doing an errand of his own one thing in which I also forgot to mention is that um, the, week I drove, the week I drove up there was the week before all the Inchlake Britain protesters were gluing themselves to the M25 so I think I, f think I was a bit lucky in that case otherwise I would have been stuck in traffic going up there as well as coming down and probably had to take another day off work because some idiot had stuck themselves to their, the uh, M25 as you can see in this picture the locomotive is undergoing its steam and hydraulic test obviously not at the same time um, the reason for a hydraulic test is to uh, obviously pump the boiler full of water uh, because water doesn't compress easy unlike a, a gas like steam um, and also to check for any leaks any sort of burst seams broken tubes and all that uh, which thankfully the loco didn't have because it was a well made boiler um, it, it, both, it passed both its steam and hydraulic uh, as you can see this photo I think this photo was taken just before I started to fire it up so 
just about before it's uh, steam test. Uh, the next picture, I believe, is um, after it was uh, it passed both its tests. We ran it on the small siding for a, a short time, and that's when we realised something bigger had happened in the boiler, which I'll explain in a second. So whilst they're uh, happily enjoying the locomotive and finally the realisation of achieving a dream had kicked in, um, we noticed that the locomotive was belching out a load of water, and by I mean a load of water, I mean a load of water. Um, we also heard a, a small gurgling sound coming from the firebox, which usually isn't a good sign, and noticing that the pressure was dropping a lot quicker than it should be. Um, which didn't mean, well, wasn't really a good sign, really. Um, a friend of mine came over and had a quick ins ex inspection, and uh, he reckoned that the superheater had uh, blown in the loco, uh, which meant I had to quickly put the fire out and drop the steam out of it through the blowdown. And this is what the next video is I'm about to show you. So after letting the locomotive cool down for a bit, we uh, investigated further as to what that sound could be, and it wasn't looking great. Um, as my friend had rightly suggested, that it, it was basically the superheater. The uh, the next group of pictures I'll probably show you are the the original superheater and me uh, fitting in or refitting in what was left of the original. So, what happened? Well, basically the superheater split in half. Um, when the chap who built the loco, including the boiler, um, when he built the superheater, he basically didn't use enough silver solder. And what happened there was that he used a copper pipe and I believe stainless steel. And from what I was told, stainless steel doesn't um, work well with silver solder or soft solder or, or some type of solder um, so what happened when I fired up the loco um, well big amount of pressurized steam came through the superheater and just blew it apart um, and also in these pictures um, we later found out that there were some cracks that were developing in the uh, not the wet header but the other end of the superheater where it sits over the fire uh, the weld head basically failed and was also causing the pressure to drop and it was basically putting up fire it was cooling the fire down therefore not giving me any more pressure after discovering the superheater uh, was the problem uh, I then had to wait I wouldn't say I didn't have to wait long but I had to wait for some time whilst uh, a chap at the club helped me out with building, I wouldn't say a new superheater, heater. I'd say he took the old superheater, got rid of the stainless steel part and just kept the copper part because the copper is a lot better of uh, sort of um, heating up water than steel and other bits and pieces. Um, so he took that away, cut it down re-soldered some bits and bobs onto it, uh, remade the end of it uh, but whilst he was doing that I went for a phase of just cleaning the loco and tinkering around with it as these next few pictures would show um, I took the injector off uh, I also, well, I, I cleaned it religiously to be honest with you um, I also, to the dismay of my lovely mother uh, had to keep it in the living room by the fireplace um, she said oh I'm not really allowed to keep it any there any any longer than that Saturday really that, that was that was next Saturday that week um, and that's when we did another wouldn't say another test because it passed the first time um, but I think after that I did run it for the first time and I was over the moon but then uh, fast forward to say a couple of weeks there was, there was a few little problems but I was still enjoying running it and all that. 
So for sitting around for a bit and nearly polishing the loco and <laughs> nearly polishing the paint off, I might say, um, it was then time to refit the new slash old superheater slash dryer and then run the loco for the very first time. And I'm proud to say here's the first video of me running it. There you go, the first video of me uh, driving the loco for the very first time. That was the very first time I've driven that loco and I would say a steam loco. A um, couple things, if if you're a mechanical engineer and you're into all this kind of stuff, um, you've probably noticed a couple things. One, being the safety valve was still lifting way below um, it's blow off point shall we say um, and two yeah it does bounce about quite a bit um, I have realized recently that one of the one or two of the leaf springs on one of the corners I've got like a weak one and the other three are sort of strong um, so I'll have to sort that out um, but yeah I've, I've, I have sorted I've tried to sort out the, the safety valve and I'll probably throw up a few pictures of the safety valve in bits um, what I did there was I took the safety valve apart uh, the weekend after um, and put all the parts into uh, not citric acid, it citric or acetic acid anyway it, it was basically vinegar uh, the stuff I put into just to clean it up because um, when the loco um, Sorry, when when I brought the loco down, the loco had barely been used, and it had been used once. Hence, why I'm having all these problems with running it and stuff like that. Um, it barely been driven; it didn't even have a washout. Um, so basically, when I took the safety other part, I had to get rid of all the, the scale and all that. Hence, why we put it in vinegar to dissolve all of it. So, yeah, I put that back together, and there should be another video. I think I'll add, but I'll put the pictures up probably well whilst I'm commentating over this really so yeah
So as you've seen, the locomotive runs much better um, with the clean safety valve and we, well I say we, me and a, a boiler inspector at the club uh, reset the safety valve so that it blows off on its you know red line uh, instead of before at like 60 psi because the locomotive runs between 30 and I think 90 psi and it was blowing off at 60. Um, I have got a few more videos on on uh, this loco which I'll put up after this commentary and um, there is one more problem that we did have with it and then after that there wasn't really much else really still had that spring problem which is on the cards and hopefully a repaint in the future but I'll stop the commentary here and I'll leave you with these videos that I have of it running so yeah I'll speak to you in a second As you can see, I was having quite a lot of fun with this loco. It sounded absolutely lovely. It really does. Um, going up the hill, in the oh, as you probably heard out of these videos, um, there's a <laughs> there's, there's one video which makes me laugh every time, and it does teach me a lesson at the end of the day. Uh, one day I was 
I took it to the railway and as you've seen I was driving it around the, the track um, but it, it was a really good day because the loco was steaming perfectly I think that day I had the real knack of it um, because the loco was steaming fine the water was alright and there was uh, lumps of coal coming out of the, uh, out the chimney well I won't spoil too much of this video but I'll <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, I'll just let you watch it. It's, it's funny, and I do excuse do excuse the bad language from this video, but it was it was very painful. So, so yeah, I'll, I'll let you watch the video, and you can have a laugh at my expense. So yeah, as, as you've seen in that video, um, what happened was I was going through the tunnel. Um, I must have had some I might, the boiler, the tubes must have been really clean because there was a lot of coal coming out of that chimney. And basically, what happened was a, a large lump of coal came out of the, uh, the boiler up the chimney and landed on the top of my head. Yeah, that's, that's that was around about the time you you heard me say so a lot of profanity um, but yeah after this it, the, the loco behaved itself and all that um, there was one more problem that did arise which I'll show in just a second um, but I'll explain first uh, basically one day I think the following Saturday um, I took the loco down the club and it um, started to steam it up and I noticed some water um, dripping down the side of the tank. At first I didn't think nothing of it but I, I did a bit more investigating myself and found out that there was a uh, uh, a pinhole in the the water tank on top of the loco. Um, nothing to worry about because it, it wasn't uh, it wasn't anything from the boiler so it was, it was nothing to worry about um, but it just meant I was losing water out of the tank. So I had a friend of mine that uh, that Saturday um, solder the hole up and uh, I uh, took some photos of the loco without its water tank on the saddle tank it looked ra rather peculiar um, I did say it does look a lot like a uh, a poly loco uh, if you're not they are um, search up on Google poly engineering and uh, they make some really good locos but they're they're going up in price they are I've been tempted to look at one of their kits but anyway, I'm not sponsored by them, so I'm not going to say much more, just in case. Um, but anyway, yeah, uh, I'll show you these pictures of the loco and the, the loco on a maintenance train that day. I forgot that. Um, and then I'll wrap the video up. So, yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, hope you have a nice day, evening, whenever you're watching this video, really. Right then, I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Forward. Try not to see what happens there.